In the field of psychology, Machiavellianism is a personality trait centered on manipulativeness, callousness, and indifference to morality with high levels of self-interest. The term is derived from a 16th century Italian philosopher named Niccolo di Bernardo Machiavelli and his most famous work, The Prince. In the underworld of the American Mafia, there have been some mafiosos who embody this personality trait. To them, the ends always justify the means. They are Machiavellian mobsters, and these are their stories. Number 22. Aladina, Jimmy the Weasel, Fratiano. Aldena James Fratiano was born in Naples, Italy in 1913, later immigrating with his family at the age of two years old to the United States and settling near Cleveland, Ohio. He was first arrested at the age of 19 on suspicion of rape. However, Fratiano was not charged. Fratiano earned his nickname the Weasel as a boy when running from the police in the Little Italy section of Cleveland. A chase witness shouted, Look at that little weasel run! And the police quickly attached the nickname to his criminal record, falsely believing it was his alias. Fratiano was an amateur boxer in his teens and allegedly fought under the moniker Kid Weasel, though this is disputed. Fratiano would begin his criminal lifestyle early on committing petty crimes before moving on to armed robberies. In his 20s, Fratiano made a name for himself robbing underground casinos in the Cleveland area. In 1935, Fratiano would be acquitted of robbery charges. However, two years later in 1937, he would be convicted of robbery and spend more than seven years in an Ohio State prison. When Fratiano was paroled in 1945, he found himself broke and single as his wife had left him and filed for divorce. In order to get back on his feet, Fratiano did what he did best and pulled numerous robberies and burglaries to build back up his bankroll. He was able to win back his wife, and with the nest egg of nearly $100,000, Fratiano moved with her to Los Angeles, California, where he immediately got involved with the rackets. Fratiano would soon connect with members of the Los Angeles Cosa Nostra family, run by boss Jack Dragna. He would also begin to cozy up with Dragna rival, crime boss Mickey Cohen, though his true allegiance lay with Dragna. These tactics became a Fratiano calling card, as it seemed his treachery would know no bounds. As an associate of the Dragna family, Fratiano would kill his own friend, Frankie Nicoli, an Italian who worked for Dragna rival Mickey Cohen. Nicoli refused to leave Cohen and join up with the Dragna mob, and was summarily executed for his decision. It is believed that this was Fratiano's first murder. Because of his acquaintance with Cohen, Fratiano was involved in setting up a number of attempts on Cohen's life, along with setting up other members of Cohen's organization. Fratiano would kill for the family again that year when asked by Dragna to kill Frank Borgia. Borgia was a Los Angeles winemaker and former bootlegger and was also a member of the Los Angeles crime family, according to Fratiano. Borgia was resisting an extortion attempt from Gaspar Mataranga and L.A. boss Jack Dragna. Family capo Frank Bonpensero and Fratiano had a friend of Borgia's bring him to a house where the two men strangled Borgia to death. Fratiano would finally make his bones by killing two Kansas City mobsters in Los Angeles. These mobsters, Anthony Brancato and Anthony Trombino, held up a sports book in the Flamingo Hotel and Casino, and thus needed to be made an example out of. Fratiano would lure the mobsters to a meet involving the robbery of a high-stakes card game, where they would both be killed inside their own car. The murder was made famous in the popular Hollywood film Kansas City Confidential as the killing of the two Tonys. In 1953, Bompensero and Fratiano would take part in another hit for Dragna. Louis, Russian Louis Strauss, was a former casino owner in Lake Tahoe and a mob-connected man who was trying to extort money from Las Vegas casino owner Benny Bignon, a friend of Dragna's. Fratiano set up Strauss by befriending him in Las Vegas and telling Louis he had $10,000 in cash in Los Angeles he would loan him. After driving to Los Angeles with Fratiano, 
Strauss then walked into a house where Bompensero and Fratiano surprised him with a rope and strangled him to death. After these murders, Fratiano would be made into the family. Fratiano would grow close with family capo Frank Bompensero, and the two would become involved in numerous rackets together. Then, a year after being made, it is alleged that Fratiano was made capo by Dragna. However, less than a year after being made capo, Fratiano would threaten a debtor and would soon be arrested for it. In 1954, Fratiano was convicted of attempted extortion, and he served six years and three months, mostly at San Quentin State Prison. After his release from prison, Fratiano would be transferred to the Chicago outfit by his own request, where he would work under front boss Sam Giancana. Fratiano would be in charge of a number of the outfit's rackets in California. Fratiano was still working with a number of his old partners in the L.A. mob. Then in 1967, Bompensero was arrested with Fratiano over a dirt-hauling union scheme where Jimmy's company had violated PUC regulations. This legal violation involved Jimmy and Jewel Fratiano's large trucking company, Fratiano Trucking. Under intense pressure, with he and Fratiano in the El Centro jail and unable to make bail, Bompensero agreed to become an undercover FBI informant, and the charges against him were eventually dropped. In 1968, Fratiano pled guilty to charges stemming from phony pay agreements with drivers at Fratiano Trucking, and in 1971 he entered another guilty plea, this time for extortion. He would serve two years for these crimes. In 1973, after finishing a stint in Chino Prison, Fratiano began cooperating with the FBI. Initially, he gave them only information he thought was worthless or that could compromise his enemies, but that would change over the years. By the time the 1970s rolled around, Fratiano had begun to develop global underworld connections. One such connection was with Australian organized crime figures Murray Riley and Bella Cide. In 1976, Australian criminal Murray Riley met with Fratiano in San Francisco, allegedly to organize drug shipments. That same year, Sydney businessman Bella Cide also met with Fratiano in San Francisco. The FBI took photographs of this meeting. Fratiano also associated with Australian Hungarian transport magnate and managing director of Thomas Nationwide Transport, Peter Abeles. Through Fratiano's connections with the Teamsters and the Longshoremen's Union, particularly Rudy Tham, a San Francisco Teamster leader, Abeles was able to use his company to smuggle drugs in and out of the United States, as well as reduce industrial tensions on the waterfront. Things would change dramatically for Fratiano in the mid-70s. In 1975, the current boss of the Los Angeles family, Dominic Brooklier, was sent to prison, and Louis Tom Dragna, was made acting boss. Dragna accepted the position on the condition that he run the family together with Fratiano. The outfit signed off on Fratiano's return to the Los Angeles family, and Fratiano would accept the proposal with the understanding that he would carry the majority of the responsibility when it came to running the family. Then in 1977, the FBI set up a pornography sting business called Forex, and used Frank Bompensero to convince the Los Angeles family to attempt to extort money from Forex. The sting operation worked, and Michael Rizzatello was given a subpoena by FBI agents who ran Forex. Soon after, Fratiano was approached by Louis Dragna about having Frank Bompensero murdered. Bompensero was one of the few made men that Fratiano trusted as they were old friends, and he was infuriated that the Los Angeles family would give him such a contract. At this point, Fratiano felt he was tricked into becoming co-acting boss with Louis Dragna, a leadership position which required him to be transferred from the Chicago outfit back to the Los Angeles family because of his close relationship with Frank Bompensero. Dominic Brooklier assumed that Fratiano could easily lay a trap and murder Bompensero. After the Forex indictments in February 1977, Fratiano questioned Von Pensero about how he learned about Forex. Unsatisfied with Von Pensero's cagey responses, Fratiano became convinced that Von Pensero was an informant. 
Graziano stalled the murder contract for months, however, until the contract was given to other L.A. mob associates. A week later, on February 10, 1977, Frank Bonpensero was shot to death at close range with a silenced 22 caliber handgun while walking home after using a payphone outside an Arco station in the Pacific Beach neighborhood of San Diego. In 1978, Fratiano told law enforcement that mob associate Thomas Riccardi had killed Bonpensero in return for membership in the Los Angeles family. Prior to the Forex sting and the Bonpensero murder, Dominic Brooklier was released from prison in October of 1976 after serving 16 months. After a transition period, Brooklier called Fratiano to a meeting around February 11, 1977 and announced to Jimmy and the other L.A. mob members that he was ready to resume his position as L.A. mob boss. Jimmy Fratiano was once again just a soldier in the L.A. mob. A tidal wave of change would affect Fratiano from halfway across the country when on October 6, 1977, Irish mob boss Danny Green, a secret FBI informant and mortal enemy of the Cleveland crime family, was killed by a car bomb outside his dentist's office in suburban Lyndhurst, Ohio. Soon after, Ray Ferretto, a soldier in the Cleveland and Los Angeles crime families, was arrested for the murder based on a detailed sketch by an eyewitness. Evidence found during a police search of his house further proved Ferretto's role in the murder. Upon hearing that Ferretto had been arrested, Cleveland mob boss James Licavoli immediately ordered the former's assassination. When Ferretto learned of this, he became a cooperating witness and testified against his co-defendants in the 1978 trial. The Cuyahoga County District Attorney indicted Licavoli, Angelo Leonardo, Ferretto, Ronald Caravia, and 15 other members of the Cleveland crime family for conspiracy to commit the murder of Danny Green. Ferretto also implicated Fratiano in the planning of Green's murder, and Fratiano was indicted for charges related to the bombing. Similarly, fearing for his safety, Fratiano, who had worked as an informant years before, also agreed to become a government witness against the Mafia. In return for his testimony, he pled guilty to multiple murder charges and received a five-year prison sentence, of which he served 21 months. In 1980, after his testimony resulted in the racketeering conviction of a number of high-level mafia figures, Fratiano entered the Federal Witness Protection Program. Fratiano claimed that the mafia had a $100,000 contract on his life. In 1987, after he published two biographies titled the Last Mafioso, with author Omid Demaras, and Vengeance is Mine, with author Michael J. Zuckerman, Fratiano was expelled from the Witness Protection Program after the Justice Department noted that it had spent almost $1 million on the Fratianos over 10 years. On June 29, 1993, Fratiano died of natural causes at his home in an undisclosed area of the country, believed to be Oklahoma City. His wife, Jean, said that he had suffered from Alzheimer's disease, as well as a series of strokes. Jimmy the Weasel Fratiano spent a career in the mob playing the angles. He was a smooth operator who never shied away from playing both sides. He is without a doubt a Machiavellian mobster. <laughs>